us tonight. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Foxworthy, and I've got a million dollars to give away to somebody that can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. On February 27th, 2007, Fox would officially launch their latest game show creation, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? The show was produced by Mark Burnett, best known for his work on Fear Factor, Survivor, and several other game shows and reality shows, and was hosted by comedian Jeff Foxworthy. Everything about it at first when the reports first got out seemed cringe and destined to be a massive failure. The whole premise centering around adults being asked grade school level questions, and anyone who succeeded could win up to $1 million. So it sounded like a showcase of the nation's simpletons, hosted by a guy who's never done a game show before. And let's be honest, his style of comedy, not everyone is going to go for it. But it turned out to be a semi hit, lasting for nearly three years on Fox. And Jeff Foxworthy was a natural at it as a host. A daytime syndicated version will launch soon after Fox cance canceled the show, with Foxworthy returning as host. And it had modified rules, but it only lasted a year and a half. In 2015, Fox revived the format, again bringing back Jeff Foxworthy. But this time the show would only last four months, and it went in and out with little fanfare. The latest revival to see the light of day ran on Nickelodeon for five months and was hosted by WWE superstar John Cena, of all people. And recently, Amazon Prime has announced their plans to revive the format and are reportedly in talks with recently retired football star Travis Kelsey to be the host. So this is a format that has never really had an overly long run. But despite that, it keeps coming back, and it found its way into several foreign markets, including Canada. Colin Mockery, and welcome to Are You Smarter Than a Canadian Fifth Grader? <laughs> now, you may remember those Canadian game shows from the 70s that offered prizes like shoe inserts and denture cream. Well, my friends, Global TV has said goodbye to those days forever. Welcome to the high-stakes world of Are You Smarter Than a Canadian Fifth Grader? When the top prize, one million tax-free dollars! Are You Smarter Than a Canadian Fifth Grader? would debut on October 25, 2007, where it aired on Global for a total of five episodes. It was taped in Toronto. So much like the Who Wants to Be Millionaire Canadian edition, this was pretty much just a test run. Global said there would be a celebrity host when they announced the show, and they certainly got a big name, actor and comedian Colin Mockery. Colin, of course, is best known as a longtime cast member of the classic improv show, Who's Line Is It Anyway? Colin is a comedic genius, and I'm a huge fan of his work. But as much as I hate to say it, I didn't like him here as a host. Colin just doesn't come across as a natural as a host. He seems phony at times, awkward, and a bit stiff. Some people are just cut out to be hosts, and some can't make that transition. And Colin's the case here. He's better at other things. It's much like Cindy mentioned recently in her game show host, Tear Maker. The show just doesn't seem to work without Jeff Foxworthy. The bulk of the changes for the Canadian version didn't really affect the gameplay. 
I will say I think Global did a much better job with the set design compared to what Fox did with the U.S. version. The U.S. version on Fox looking like a weird crossover between Millionaire and Wintuition set. Whereas Canada's set looked like a classroom, honestly, and was bright and colorful. Also, the Canadian version would feature a class of seven fifth grade students compared to the U.S. version, which only had five, and the syndicated U.S. version, which only had three. And even then, partway into the run, two students switched out with two other students. Colin explained the reason for the expansion to a class of seven was that because during the talent search, while well, the show was in production, the producers were so impressed by the kids they interviewed, they decided to go to seven because they couldn't stop at five. Now, the gameplay remained pretty much the same as the U.S. and most of the foreign versions. One adult contestant plays. Over the course of the show, the contestant faces up to 10 questions from the, direct from the grade school textbooks, ranked in difficulty from first through fifth grade, with two questions per grade on different subjects. The contestant can play them in any order they wish. Tesson chooses one kid from the resident class of fifth graders to be their teammate for two questions, picking a new kid after two questions. The contestant chooses a subject, and a question is asked. Once all the kids have written down their answers and locked them in, the contestant offers theirs verbally. If they answer correctly, then they win money. The money ladder starts at $1,000 for the first correct answer, and goes all the way up to $500,000 for the 10th correct answer. Once the contestant has cleared the 10th question, they can then elect to drop out with all the money they've won, or they can risk it on one final question from the 5th grade, which will be worth $1 million. And remember, in Canada, it's tax free Throughout the game, the contestant also has three cheats at their disposal. The contestant can elect to peek at their teammate's paper, meaning that they can see what their teammate wrote down, and can elect to either use that answer or come up with their own. They can elect to copy their teammate's answer, which will automatically lock them into whatever their teammate said. And one time over the course of the game, their teammate can save them. If the contestant gets the question wrong, but their teammate gets it right, then the contestant still gets the money and can play on. Before answering a question, the contestant can opt to drop out and leave with all the money they've won up to that point, or risk playing on by giving an answer. If, however, they get a question wrong and they can't be saved, either because they've already used the cheat or because the kid also got it wrong, then it's a flunk out and they lose everything. However, once the contestant clears the fifth question, they are guaranteed $25,000. Now, answering grade school level questions, it kind of sounds like it should be really easy. But the fact is, a lot of these questions are things that we really don't think about as adults after we finish school. And in many cases, we never hear it again. So really, it becomes less of a quizzer and more of a memory game. For the kids, it's easy because it's still fresh in their minds since they had really just learned it. But when you haven't heard it in 20, 30 years, possibly, it can be a bit more challenging. So it actually makes for kind of a fun concept. One gripe I do have with the show is that it's a little derivative of who wants to be a millionaire with the lifelines, I mean cheats, and the money ladder. And unfortunately, they kind of messed up on the money ladder as it gets up towards the end because the gambles aren't really even. Who wants to be a millionaire laid theirs out perfect as it doubled or nearly doubled virtually every step of the way at least on the original money ladder. But with this version, when you look at those top amounts, 
the contestant would have to risk uh, 150000 to gain 125 when going for $300,000. And then you would have to risk 275000 to add 200000 when going for half a million, which is not really cool. You got to risk more than you stand to gain. They would have been better off, I think, making these final amounts 75000 125 250,000 and 500,000. At least then it would make for a more even gamble. And maybe more contestants would have been willing to take that risk. But maybe they were just too afraid that it would look too much like who wants to be a millionaire. I say you're already halfway there, might as well go the rest of the way. But despite that, it kind of works. And fortunately, though, they just couldn't get a long run out of it because I guess pretty quickly the novelty just wears off when you realize it's not so much a case of showcasing dumb people as it is a memory test. Now, there was a Quebecois version of the show as well, even though the English version didn't come back after the five-episode test run. The Quebecois version was taped for TVA, and was called La Classe de Cinquième, or the Fifth Grade Class. It was hosted by Montreal-based TV personality Charles La Fortune, and ran for three years, with similar rules, just a $250,000 prize. But unfortunately, I've been unable to find any footage of that, so I can't really edit this review. So that's going to do it for this edition of the Games of Canada. On behalf of all of us, I'm Mark Power, saying long may your big chip drop.